Hi, so today we're going to be looking at the laws of indices. So let's first get started with what indices actually are. So indices tell us the number of time a number or letter has been multiplied by itself. So what I mean by this is, for example, let's say we have 2 to the power of x. Now the 2, the large number at the bottom, is the base and the floating small number at the next to it is known as the power or index so in this case x is the power or index number and 2 is the base now for example let's look at this example we have over here so we have 3 to the power of 4 now the index over here 4 tells us the number of times we multiplied the base which is the large number at the bottom by itself so 3 to the power of 4 means that we multiply 3 by itself 4 times. So this means that we're doing 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. So 3 multiplied by itself 4 times. So now that we've covered the basics of what indices actually are, let's go over the actual laws of indices, the rules. So over here I've put that laws of indices provide us with rules for simplifying expressions involving powers of the same base. Now the fact that they're the same base is very important and it's the only way you can um, carry out calculations and simplify expressions um, to do with indices. So if you look at this box over here with rules and examples, you can see for every single rule I have the same base which is A. And this is essential for carrying out these calculations simplifications so you must have the same base okay now let's go over the actual rules um the first rule that i have over here is that a to the power of m times a to the power of n equals a to the power of the two indices added together this is the multiplication rule of indices so how this works if we look at an example, um, so over here we have a to the power of 3, where m equals 3, times a to the power of 2, where n equals 2, equals will equal to these two indices, 3 and 2, added together. Now, of course, 3 plus 2 is 5. And so the resulting index will be 5, and the base stays the same, because we have the same base throughout, and so the base will stay the same. And over here... I have like expanded what of course a to the power of 3 is which is of course a multiplied by itself three times and we've timed this by a multiplied by itself two times and over here I've put that now if you count the a's in total we have one two three four five so we get a to the power of five so that sort of explains why it's a to the power of five so why we add the two indices together but of course if you have examples where you have very large numbers like if we had a to the power of a hundred times a to the power of five of course you wouldn't be able to write note down every single a because that that would take a very long time so if you just know that the rule that a to the power of m times a to the power of n equals the two indices added together, then you can just simply just write a to the power of m plus n, and you have the answer. So a to the so if we did have a to the power of hundred times a to the power of n, um, a to the power of five, sorry, you'd know that the final answer would just be those two indices one hundred and five added together. So the final answer would be a to the power of one hundred and five. Now. The second rule of laws of, in, of indices um, is that if you have a to the power of m divided by a to the power of n, then you would have to subtract those two indices. So, for example, let's say we had a to the power of 4 divided by a to the power of 2. That means we would have to subtract the two indices, and in this case the two indices of 4, and 2, so 4 minus 2 is 2, and that's what you get in the final answer over here. Sorry, over here. Now, the reason for this is if we look at the full expression over here, so a to the power of 4 is, of course, a multiplied by itself 4 times, so 1, 2, 3, 4, and this is divided by a multiplied by itself 2 times. So over here we have a 
um, multiplied by e two times. Now, when you have two numbers or letters that are common in both the numerator and denominator, you can cancel it out because it'll cancel down to one. So we can cancel out that and that. There we go. And as you can see, we have another one. So we can also cancel that out, cancel that out. But eventually, we don't have any more in the denominator. We still have some in the numerator, but we don't have any in the denominator. So we won't be able to cancel out further. So then this ends up as the final answer. And of course, we can simply simplify that to a to the power of 2. And of course, that's the answer that we get. And then of course, in the previous example, I said that it's of course very hard to note down every single number, especially if you have a very large one, if it's a to the 100 divided by a to a to the 5. So it's simply easier if you just follow this rule, which is that you subtract the two powers when you're dividing two um, index numbers. Okay, now let's move on to the third rule. So let's say that we have a to the power of m brackets to the power of n. In this rule, what you have to do is that you have to multiply the number the index inside the bracket by the index outside the bracket. So for example, over here we have a to the power of 2 brackets to the power of 3. And all we simply have to do over here is multiply these two index numbers. And so 2 times 3 is 6. So of course the final answer with the same base, a to the power of 6. And if we want to look at this full expression of this, when we say a to the power of 2 brackets to the power of 3, we mean that we're multiplying whatever's inside the bracket by itself three times. So in this example, we're multiplying a to the power of 2 by itself three times. So we do a to the power of 2 times a to the power of 2 times a to the power of 2. Now this looks very sim similar to a rule that we looked at before, which is the multiplication rule where you have to add the powers together. So if we take that rule and apply over here, we get 2 plus 2 plus 2, which is 6. And that's the proof or the reason behind why it is a to the power of 6. OK, um, another rule is that a to the power of 1 is always a. And of course, that makes sense because you're only multiplying it one time. So it will always be just a. And if you had 2 to the power of 1, it will always just be 2 because you only multiply it by itself one time. Another rule is that a to the power of 0 is always equal to 1. Any number or letter to the power of 0 will always be 1. Um, if you had 3 to the power of 0, it will always be 1. 2 to the power of 0, that will always be 1. So that's another important rule that you should be familiar, familiar with. Now let's move on to some rules. So over here we have a to the power of minus m equals 1 over a to the power of m, which is of course the reciprocal. Um, so let's look at an example to explain this. So a to the power of minus 2 means that we do the reciprocal, which means that we would do 1 over a to the power of 2. And now, if, as the 2 has gone to the denominator, we get rid of that minus sign because, of course, that's what the reciprocal is. So it will simply just be 1 over a to the power of that number, but without the minus sign, as now we've flipped it over and we've done the reciprocal. Because, of course, the negative sign indicates that we're doing the reciprocal. So... If we look at this example, the final rule, which is um, a to the power of b. Sorry, this isn't very clear, but this is supposed to be all in a bracket. To the power of m, where m is our index, this equals to the fraction a over b. And both of the numbers, the numerator and the denominator, are to the power of m, whatever the value of m may be. So let me move the, um, this so that you're able to see it. So in our example in red, which is below, we can see that m is 2. 
This means that um, our final expression that we can simplify it to is a over b, where a and b are both to the power of 2. And that would be the simplification for the laws of indices. So as you can see, there's not many rules that you have to really know, but of course, when you do examples, you need to try to remember all these rules so that you can, of course, put them all together and come to a sort of answer. Because a lot of questions eventually in exam questions and stuff will often combine these rules together. And it can be quite difficult at first, but of course, with practice and with you know, knowing the rules and stuff, it, get better, it gets better over time. So that's enough for the laws of indices and um, I hope to speak again soon. Bye!